looks like you already visited at home this spring. The patio looks great, but why the makeover? Because we're hosting the block party. Because Sunday dinner's moved outdoors. Because, oh, Hunter's graduation and Emily's baby shower. And because sometimes I can just sit back and enjoy it. Explore at home's expanded selection of patio decor, like cushions starting at $9.99 and garden themes from modern to coastal. At home, the home decor superstore. Any style, any budget, any reason to redecorate. Visit one of our six Atlanta area at home superstores today. Blog Talk Radio. We are the UR Tennis Network. Our mission is to be the voice of tennis. We enlist a team of passionate enthusiasts to promote our sport. We strive to bring interesting perspectives on the many spins of tennis. Our goal is to provide the learners of our sport with current news and information from many angles. We seek active participation from communities interested in tennis, but tennis is not interested in them. We are expanding our outreach. Tennis is a true lifetime sport that needs to be talked about. And the UR Tennis Network pledges to pursue this idea relentlessly. Good morning and welcome to the Parenting Aces radio show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and we have another great show for you today. I'm really excited to share with you today's guest. His name is Harsh Munkad, and Harsh is the co-creator of a new platform for tennis called Tennicity, and I'm going to let him explain more (laughs) about the origins of Tennicity and what they're hoping to accomplish, but I think it's an important new development, uh, especially in the world of junior tennis and junior tennis coaching, and so I'm hoping those of you who are parents and coaches listening to this broadcast or the podcast, as the case may be, will really pay close attention to what this platform has to offer and take a look at it because I think it's a game changer. And I'm I'm pretty excited to learn more alongside the rest of you today, but also to be able to share this with you and, uh, you know, really hope you're going to take advantage of it. Before I bring Harsh on, I want to go to a quick commercial, but when we come back, um, oh, actually, I'm not going to go to a quick commercial. (laughs) I'm just going to bring Harsh right on the air, and uh, let me get him mic'd up here. Harsh, are you there? Yep, yep, I'm here, Lisa. (laughs) Thank you so much. Sorry for that little snafu there. Um, My commercial is... Uh, doesn't seem to be working, so no biggie. But um, so welcome to the show, and thank you for being with us. And before we jump into Tenicity and I have you talk about all the amazing aspects of, of this new tennis platform, I wanted to just ask you to give our listeners some background on you and your involvement in the world of tennis. Sure, sure. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you for the introduction. We're very excited with launching Tenicity and uh, look forward to speaking more about it. Um, so, yeah, so my background uh, for, for the American audience, I grew up in India and I come from a family with a rich legacy in sports. So my both my grandparents, my grandfather on my dad's side played cricket for India, um, has world records in cricket. My grandfather on my mother's side played tennis for India in Davis Cup. And then my parents, my dad played for India in cricket, and my mom was India's number one tennis player um, and was the first Indian uh, women's player to play at Wimbledon. So both our families, uh, our legacy is in sports, and my grandparents and my parents, uh, after sports, they had their careers as coaches. So I sort of grew up around sports and coaching And so from a very young age, I felt like I was just around it all the time. And it got me thinking about uh, how do you progress in sports and how do you manage training and so forth. And I'll talk more about that. But uh, so I grew up uh, in this family where I had tremendous opportunity to learn tennis. My mom was my first coach. My grandfather was on the court with me. So from a young age, I had access to great knowledge, very good training, 
And that really helped me. I, I felt very fortunate to have this opportunity, with, which a lot of players don't have. And so through, through the junior tennis, I sort of kept progressing um, and then was the number one junior in India at the age of uh, 17 in the under-18 age group. And I was thinking about I always had a vision to play professionally. That was my goal from a young age. And at that point, I made a decision to come to the U.S. Uh, to play college tennis. And I got, got an opportunity at the University of Minnesota, which is how I came to Minnesota. And I had a great coach there, David Getz, who's currently the coach at the University of Pennsylvania. And my three years at Minnesota helped me to continue to improve uh, the NCAA system is a great system to develop your game, to, to get an education. And at that point, um, I won the NCAA singles national indoor title in my junior year, where I reached the number one in the country, and I felt I was ready to play professionally. At the same time, I got a break with the Indian Davis Cup team. So after my junior year, I decided to turn pro and uh, entered the ATP Tour, which is where I played for nine years. I played from 2002 to 2010. It was a tremendous journey, a lot of ups and downs, uh, a big injury in the middle. So I've gone through a lot, but uh, got up to 220 in singles, uh, won a challenger title, played at Grand Slams in the qualifying. And then uh, towards 2010, which is when I retired that year, I qualified at Wimbledon in the doubles. I was able to play in the main draw there. So that was a real highlight for me. Uh, And so that's really my tennis journey as a player. Uh, which ended in 2010, and since 2010, I have run a tennis academy at a country club here in Minnesota for two seasons, Golden Valley Country Club. Pretty large program. We had about 300-plus members. I had a team of 15 coaches, and so I had the experience of managing a large program and and, and uh, sort of how do you put a great quality product out there where all the players get um, – Get the get goals and clarity and a structure, which is all built into Tennessee, and I'm sure we'll talk more about. But that was my experience as a coach, and so I really, uh, after Golden Valley, I went back to business school, got an MBA, got some corporate experience. In the meantime, we were developing Tennessee, and uh, this this February, after graduating from my MBA program and working in finance, I decided to step away and come back to tennis. I'm very excited about Tennessee because this is really where I feel most aligned. Uh, this is where I feel I can provide, make the most impact. I have a lot to share. I feel like I have a lot of value I can add to players, coaches, and parents. And, and so now uh, I'm excited to pursue Tennessee and build a life around tennis. Um, and so, so that's my, my story to this point. It's so funny because my guest on last week's show, Trey Walston, who – coaches my women's team here in Atlanta, has a really similar story to yours. And, you know, in that he played in college, um, he never p- pursued professional tennis, but after college went to work in, in the world of finance and eventually made his way back into the world of tennis. So um, I wonder if that's a common journey for you know for high level players um to be interesting to look look a little more into that so i okay. i'm really really excited to kind of delve into tenacity with you today and give you the opportunity to talk about what it is that tenacity is adding to the tennis landscape especially as it applies to junior tennis development and what you're hoping to do with this platform um, in terms of, you know, getting a higher level of tennis out of the players that utilize tennisity? Yeah, absolutely. So um, great question. I'll, I'll start with a story that I think is, is really where this idea, this training methodology that tennisity has been designed with, so Tenacity is a web platform, but the platform has been created and designed with a lot of tennis knowledge. So if you look at the design, the flow of the website, all the things that we've chosen to include in, 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 in the technology tools, which I'll talk more about. First, we've thought about tennis, and we've put ourselves in, in the perspective of a tennis coach. I've used my experience as a player, as a coach, and then we've worked hard to say, okay, how does this fit in? So that's the one key aspect of tenacity. And, you know, it really starts with a story that uh, that I look back when I was 10 years old and I was training 
uh, with my mom as, as my coach, and she she kept asking me. She said, "You know, how many serves have you made in the court? How many did you make in? How many targets did you did you hit?" And those were the questions she was asking me. And, and as a ten year old, I was thinking, "Why is she asking me? You know, such specifics on the data, on the numbers?" And I've realized now that you know, by working with her, I sort of developed that that instinct to to keep an eye on the numbers, have some objectivity to my training. And what that does is that as you get a sense of your numbers, you understand where you are today and you can get a sense of your progress over time as opposed to just simply going out there and hitting. So over the, over the years, I've seen that a lot of players are playing tennis and they go out there and they practice. But I always brought this uh, a higher degree of objectivity of saying, okay, I'm going to practice one hour, but when I do my serves, I'm going to actually consciously keep track of how many serves did I make, how many targets did I hit. And, and, and that approach is what we built into Tennessee. So to, to answer your question, is how is it going to add value to players? There are two key aspects that, that we're talking about. One is a more objectives-based training program. So the ability to use technology to capture, share, and to gain insights from data. So when I say data, I mean both the notes. So think about notes from a coach and think about numbers. So, uh, you know, if you're counting, for example, the coach says hit serves, you may count how many first serves did you make out of 10. You may count how many second serves can you hit without missing. Um, you, can, you can count how many targets did you hit. You can look at the speed of the serve. So both from a qualitative, from a note standpoint, and from a quantitative, from a number standpoint, you can, you can capture data. And what the platform allows you to do is very quickly add, input the data on the platform. Now, there are several advantages that happen through that. Number one, the data doesn't get lost. So one year from now, if you want to look back and say, I want to see what my numbers were on my serve. I want to see how many targets I hit. You can quickly do that. Within 20 seconds, you can pull up that, that assessment, that evaluation, and you can look at it. That's first. So you can store it. You can uh, access it quickly. The coach or the parent uh, or the player can share this information very quickly with each other. So just this weekend, a 12-year-old player that I trained, she played at USDA tournament. And uh, on Saturday, I got a notification on my email saying that Aditi, that's her name, she uploaded her comments from her match. And I, I get an email notification telling me that, that she's inputted this information, which then I click on and then I go to the platform. When I went there, she had her match score uh, put in. She had her notes from her match saying, you know, these are the two takeaways. I did this well. I, did, uh, I need to work on this. And so in real time, not being at that location, I was in the loop. I knew what her score was. I knew what she had done well, what she needed to improve on. And so that's the kind of communication that can happen as well. So just sort of going back, you can store this information uh, and it doesn't get lost. You can access it quickly down the road. Number two, you can share it very easily between your coaching team. And, and then you can see trends, right? So when you have data that's there, you can see trends. And I'll talk more about it. But player development is all about thinking about, okay, where am I today? But also connecting the dots between um, six months from now. How are you progressing? How are you doing relative to your competition? And I feel right now a lot of this information is either in multiple places, you know, notes, uh, maybe just discussed somewhere. So it's in four or five different places. And a lot of this information over time gets lost. So one is, uh, so that's the big value that we're bringing uh, from, from an information connecting the dots standpoint. And then just sort of as you do this more, it trains you to be more objectives driven. So the second key aspect is uh, facilitating a more objectives driven training program, which, uh, which I believe helps coaches get better and helps parents, uh, players get better, and then just empowers parents, keeps them in the loop as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And, you know, you and I have, have spoken at length a couple times prior to today, and one of the things that kept jumping out at me as, as we were on the phone together was this whole idea of having a plan and having a way to record the plan, update the plan, and share the plan with the three legs of the triangle and, you know, 
a lot of people talk about this, the player, parent, and coach form the triangle. And it's important right. that, as you said, all three are in the loop. And so tenacity is, is really providing an opportunity. Let's face it, as parents, oftentimes we're either perceived as being uh, uneducated or we're perceived as being over-involved, Right. So right. it's very rare to hear a coach <laughs> talk about a, a tennis parent that has found that happy medium between <laughs> understanding what their role is, yet allowing the coach and the player to perform their roles to to their utmost uh, level. And I think that's one of the challenges we face. So, so one of the things that you're accomplishing with tennisity is – putting that information out there so the parent is as involved as he or she wants to be by virtue of simply clicking on a link and having the That's information right. at their fingertips. Um, That's right. But, but, but then, you know, another aspect of this that I really like is, as you said, it provides a, a place or a way for the coaches to really devise a plan and then be held accountable for that plan. You know, the player is held That's accountable, right. but the coach is also held accountable. And, and can you talk about the, why that's such an important piece of this? It's, it's hugely important from so many angles. Uh, one is that the team is very important. You look at any tennis player, take Roger Federer, for example. Look, look, you know, when he's playing a grand slam, just look at the number of people that are sitting in his box. There's the coach, there's the trainer, there's potentially a nutritionist there, there is the agent, there is family. There are typically eight or ten people behind uh, Roger Federer at every match, and that's the story with, with the best players in the world. So you have to connect the dots. It is a teamwork. One player alone, one parent alone, one coach alone cannot do this. It's, it's, it requires everyone to come together. And we are moving in an age where we have digital technology, where we have the web. Let's leverage that form. And that's really what Tenacity is about. It's about leveraging the web, digital technology, and making it a lot more efficient for coaches to log in. Yes, there's a learning curve up front uh, to learn a new software. It's not a big learning curve. This has been very intuitively designed. It's, again, I, uh, you know, as I said, tennis is up front. So for tennis coaches, it's going to be very easy to learn. For parents, it's going to make sense. For players, my 12-year-old players are using this and they love it. So it's, it's very simple to use. Um, but coming back to that point is we're really leveraging technology, making it more efficient for the, for the coaches to log in and provide information to the players and the parents. And so now we're going to elevate the conversation uh, that coaches and parents are having, right? So we're, we're trying to elevate that where the parent is going to know what the coach is, is, is doing. That, that's just information that's going to be out on the platform. Now the parent is in the loop. And they can ask more educated questions. They may ask about, for example, you know, I see that my son or daughter is working on their forehand, specifically the technique. Can you tell me what else she can do to improve? Those are the kind of conversations that I think make the experience a lot more positive for everyone. And, uh, and when communication flows easier, the coaches are going to enjoy their job a lot more. They're going to feel empowered. Players are going to get great feedback, and so they're going to be empowered. They're going to have a sense of how they're doing. And parents are going to be empowered because if they're coming from non-tennis backgrounds, they start to learn a little bit more. They start to uh, understand what is the plan, what is the coach working on. And if they do have knowledge, then they can sort of add more value to it, right? So when you have context, you can add more value. Right now, a lot of player, uh, parents don't have context. They're not very sure of what's going on. So Hopefully, the, the, the entire experience will be more positive for everyone. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we've, we've designed Tennessee in a way where the coach, the director of tennis or the coach, has the power to decide what players and parents can do on the site. So, for example, the coach can set the back-end functionality to decide, okay, what am I going to allow parents to do? Come in, can they upload matches, can they write comments, 
Um, do I want to, what kind of permissions do I want to give them? And the reason we did that is we want to ultimately give the power to the coach. The coach should be the one coaching, right? Um, so we still want to maintain that, uh, but this way the coach can really set the tone, set the parameters, and manage the communication, manage player development in a more organized way. So hopefully we get away from um, the problem that you mentioned where either the parent is perceived as not knowing enough or the parent is um, sort of getting too involved. And so we're really empowering coaches to manage that dynamic much better uh, moving forward. Let's talk practical aspects of this. There is a fee involved for a coach Mm -hmm. or an academy to, you know, devise a profile or or get involved with tenacity. Um, Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously cost is an issue. What are the reasons that you're giving to coaches for why they should spend that money to use tenacity? And then again, practically speaking, can the coaches offset that cost in some way to make it, kind of a no-brainer for them to get involved? Absolutely. So so I'll speak to the first uh, question is why they should use it. I think it's fundamental when you think about player development. A lot of what is happening right now is moment-to-moment conversations, moment-to-moment data points. So, for example, if you're playing, Lisa, I might take a uh, you know video of, your, of you playing and then share my comments with you and then email it to you. Same way if I'm training a junior player, there are apps out there where you can take a video and you can record it side by side, make some comments, and then shoot it to the email. So that, to me, are moment-to-moment conversations, and they're important. But what Tenacity is bringing is a way to connect the dots over time. And player development is all about seeing progressions and seeing trends over time. How is the player improving over time is the key question here. How is the forehand developing over time? How is the serve developing over time? How is he or she, uh, you know, he or she the player, developing on multiple aspects over time? And so that's very important. And so a platform is really where you can save that information. We have a feature on Tenacity where you can pull up the, the players. So, for example, any player, you can pull them up. You can run uh, an evaluation. If, if it's a consistent evaluation, let's say you're looking looking at uh, forehands. Um, You can pull that up and you can set your date range. And and when you click go, it shows you the chart of how that player has progressed over time. That's that's the information we need. The second aspect is you need to understand how the player is progressing relative to the competition. So when you, uh, in Tenacity, when you keep your logs of matches and when you see sort of your match results and your feedback. For example, if you played someone today and you, and you noted his name, you noted the score, and then in your feedback there you said something like, you know, I noticed he's, he's a really strong player, but his backhand was technically uh, weak, and so I attacked the backhand, and that's how I, I won the match. Now, if you play the same player one year from now, and you notice that his, now he's a completely different player and his backhand is much better than what it was, you can go back to one year ago and say, you know, you can quickly pull up that match with two clicks and say, oh, I just want to revisit this. I'm playing this guy again. I, I remembered I played him last year. I just want to go through my notes a little bit. And then you did that and you said, oh, yeah, I noticed that his backhand was weak. Then you went out and played him and you realized he's made significant improvements on his backhand. Now you've got some information. You say, you know, this guy in one year has really improved his backhand. And now he's a much more solid player. So i, I got to keep my eye on him because he's really making big strikes. So those are the sort of things you can do. One is you can see your progress over time, but you can see how you're doing relative to your competition. And I think that's the value here for coaches. Uh, It's fundamental for them to to spend some time out of the court. Uh, I I do get some pushback saying, you know, who's going to input the data? This is going to be a little bit of extra time. And it's all valid. I respect that. I empathize with coaches. It's It's a tough industry. There are long hours that you put on the court. Um, There's a lot of work. But it's fundamental that you take 10 or 15 minutes before you train a player to think about where the player is today. So we have this uh, feature on the site that's called a dashboard. Every player, every group has a dashboard. And what the dashboard is, is essentially it makes the coach list the characteristics of the player's game 
and, and then it drills down to what are the player's goals. It's fundamental that you spend 10 minutes before you start working with a player to do that. Um, from a coach, it's great for the coach to, to, to engage in this exercise because it gives you sort of the starting point. It's great for the player and the parent to see this because everyone needs to understand where you are today. If you don't understand fundamentally where you are today, how are you going to chart the path to where you want to be tomorrow? So the dashboard makes you understand where you are today. From the dashboard, we go into uh, creating some evaluations, creating some assessments based on the player's goals. So now you're saying, okay, I understand where I am today. Now I'm going to define what success looks like for me. I'm going to figure out where do I want to go, and I'm going to figure out a way to measure whether I'm going in that direction. So, for example, if I'm in Minneapolis, I need to understand, first of all, that I'm in Minneapolis. And if I want to go to Chicago, and if Chicago is my future destination, then I need to chart my path to Chicago, and I need to have some sense when I'm going towards Chicago, is, am I going towards Chicago or am I going towards Wyoming? Right, uh, so I have to have some <laughs> some ability to measure where I am going. So that's what we built in, into the site, um, and then you support the player uh, with training resources. So you sort of close the loop with training resources and a team. So just to summarize again, for the coaches, it gives them ability to understand where they are today. You 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 understand where you want to go tomorrow. You have an ability to measure whether you're going in that direction. And then you can support the player with training resources and a team environment, a community environment to help them ex succeed on those parameters. So I think for coaches, the extra time is absolutely worth it. Um, I use it for my players and um, my parents. They see so much value in what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Um, the, the return on investment for them is very strong. Um, I build a lot of loyalty. I differentiate myself from other coaches. And so there's so many positives that come out of spending some more time thinking about a plan and, and putting in some more work into these aspects that are going to have big implications for the coach, for the training program. Because as you know, Lisa, when you find a good coach, I'm sure um, as a parent, and you see that the coach is taking the time to think about these things and delivering value to you, um, first of all, uh, I'm sure you are thrilled. And then you're, you're probably going to go to 10, 10 of your friends and tell them that, you know, you need to look into this, this program and this coach and this is what they're doing. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, isn't that sort of no, the... No, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. And so then for the yeah. program, they're building, they're building their reputation, right, to be a great program that's taking some more time to think about structure and, uh, and value. Sure. And, and, you know, one of the things that, that you had said to me before um, is to the coach that's concerned about the added expense of being part of Tenacity, yep. if you break it down by player or by family, you can yep. pass the cost along and it only comes out to a few dollars a month extra for the family, which, you know, from speaking from the parent side, I think most parents would be fine with having a, a slight increase in their monthly expense if it meant getting this amount of added value. That's right. So it really comes down to we have two plans depending on what the program chooses, and one plan gives you the dashboard, gives you the lesson plans, the drills, um, and the second plan really adds a little more features such as video uploads, some of our more sort of assessments, evaluations, and so forth. But depending on what the coach chooses, it's really 265 to 996 a month if you break it down per player. So again, 265 to 996 a month, and the average well, parent. Let's, wait, wait. Playing, let's let's specify. Wait, harsh. Specify where the decimal point is there. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, it's you know it's it's either way you look at it, it's below ten bucks for a month, right? right for a player. So right. so when you're spending the average parent, and uh, I wrote a comment here on this that when you think about three group lessons and you average it to about thirty dollars a group lesson, so that's ninety dollars, and you take one private lesson, which is let's just say around sixty sixty five dollars, three group lessons and one private lesson a week. That's $150 a week. You add in maybe some tournament play, some match time. So let's just say the average tennis parent for a competitive competitive tennis player spends between $150 to $200 a week. 
So that's that's about six hundred to eight hundred dollars a month. When you're spending six hundred to eight hundred dollars a month, and you're getting the value that we're delivering from Tenacity, the dashboards, objective feedback on progress, training resources, a well-aligned coaching team, which which I want to touch on too, because internally this has implications on how a coaching team can be better aligned. But when when the player, when the parent is receiving that kind of value for inside ten dollars. For an additional ten dollars, to me, it's it's a very strong value proposition. It's really a no-brainer. So, one of the uh, you know one of my sort of invitations to parents is please go check the site and uh, learn more about it. Connect with us. Uh, connect with me. My email is hmancat10 at gmail dot com, and uh, and then let your coaches know about it. Uh, you know, and and sort of encourage them to use the site to try it out because the value that you're going to get is going to be tremendous and really what you deserve. When you're spending 600 to $800 a month, you deserve um, a lot more value. And so Tenacity can really help, help you um, sort of come away from this experience feeling satisfied, right? Because one of the, the, the things that, that I've come through, come across a lot of parents while I was a director of tennis and just through my sort of coaching experience is they, they invest a lot of time, they invest a lot of money, they invest a lot of resources, and at the end of the day, many of them walk away feeling like, you know, just they didn't, they didn't really receive the value. And so let's change that equation. Let's give parents the value that they deserve. Um, we cannot predict success. Tennis, yeah, like any sport, you don't know who's going to be a champion. Despite the best efforts of the coaching team and everyone involved, sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't work. There are too many variables here. But at least if we can share what the plan is with the parents, if we can show parents that we're making a sincere effort, then they can walk away, players can walk away, at least feeling like, yeah, we, we got value here. This was a great experience. This, this, this is an experience that we would recommend to, to our friends. So that's really um, where Tenacity 2 can provide a lot of value. And let me just put this out there for the listeners. It is spelled T-E-N-I-C-I-T-Y. So that's tenicity.com if you want to check it out. And I do highly recommend that at the very least you go to the website and poke around a little bit and um, see what Harsh has created and, and what this platform can offer to all tennis players and tennis families because it really is it's pretty remarkable. Simple, very simple and you know, maybe one of those things that you say, well, gosh, shouldn't my coach already be doing all these things? And the answer is, well, yeah, they should. But many of them don't because they have a time barrier or maybe they just don't even have the knowledge to, you know, to create these types of plans and reports. Tenacity makes it very simple. It's like you said, Harsh, it's it's a very small learning curve, and the coaches that are trying it are having a very positive response. And you know, I'm I was pleased to see that our partner, High Altitude Tennis, is is going to be using Tenacity. They signed on, and um, Ryan and his coaching group. I mean, those guys are amazing, and and they saw the value in this, and and you know, are giving it a whirl with, with their academy. So that's great stuff. I want to ask you, Harsh, that's right. Tenicity, Tenicity is an interesting choice of names, and maybe yep. you could explain the origin of it and why you all chose that specific name for your platform. Right. So, you know, much credit, and I should say this, tremendous amount of credit for building Tenacity goes to my partner, Luke Wilcox, who is just uh, an amazing guy, a true inspiration to me. Luke Luke's has a great story. He grew up in South Dakota, um, came up, you know, playing in the parks, uh, had, had, you know, his dad taught him tennis, had a great high school coach, and then ended up playing Division One college tennis and, and then was a coach. So, so a tremendous story of, of making the most of what he had from South Dakota and reaching a high level in the game and, when, when Luke and, and, and I got together in 2013 when we were discussing the creation of Tennessee and we both felt passionately about giving back to tennis and sharing what we've learned, trying to play a role in player development, 
Uh, much like your story, Lisa, on, on how you started the website here, is this is this calling to come back and, and to share your experience and, and to make an impact in others' lives. It was the same experience that we had, and we talked about Tennessee. And Luke actually came up with the term, and we said, well, it's got to be something in tennis. So so we got the 10 in there. Um, and then we said, okay, tenacity. It takes a lot of tenacity. As, as you know, as a tennis parent, uh, Lisa, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs, and, and you've got to be uh, committed and, and go through all of that as a family. Your whole life gets consumed with it, especially when you're raising competitive tennis players. It, it, you're traveling constantly. Sometimes a parent has to give up a job to, 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 give, to give their kids the right attention, to get them the right coaching. So you're investing so much time, and, and so you have to have great tenacity to, to improve and, and to stay on the journey. And so that is a core value of tenacity. So we got in the tenacity there. And finally, we said it takes a team. It takes a team of, uh, of people around you to support you. Sometimes it's extended family. It's the coaching team. It's multiple coaches. It's the trainers. And so we really need this engagement and team spirit. And we said city. You know, a city is sort of uh, a location, a place where people come together. And so... That's the, uh, the origins of tenacity is, is combining those three elements, the tennis, the tenacity, and the team spirit to come up with tenacity. I love it. It's, it's a, great, a great word that you guys created and um, a really great platform. So what are the plans as tenacity grows? What do you see happening, you know, a year down the road, five years down the road, ten years down the road? Yep. Yeah, so one of the core uh, driving forces were, and I shared Luke's story coming up from South Dakota. I had a similar experience growing up in India and coming to the U.S. and, and, and going through that journey, reaching the ATP, uh, overcoming a lot of challenges. We, we really wanted to level the playing field. So when I think of, of the future, and it's very exciting, it's actually happening right in front of our eyes right now, um, we want to level the playing field. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the same training methodology that I have used that I feel was, was a huge advantage to me to take me to the level that I got to, the, this is what I saw around me, that the best players in the world train. They always have a very good plan. They always have a very good idea of where they are, their goals, how they're going to get there. They have a sense of how they're doing towards that. So we want to scale that and we want to take that same methodology of training that the very best in the world are using and bring it down to, to all levels of junior development. Think about grassroots. Think about uh, you know the, the early junior stages. Think about more competitive tennis. So we want to really take Tennessee as a platform and take it to the larger academies, to the independent coaches. So we have many, many segments, but What's exciting is right now you mentioned uh, High Altitude Tennis Academy in Colorado, which is a which is a wonderful academy, very focused on objectives based training. They are rolling out. Uh, we are with them currently in a pilot, uh, and it's going smoothly. At the same time, we have now one ATP player, top 200 doubles player, has joined the platform, and his team is going to be using this. Uh, we have another ATP player that's going to be joining this week. So we have two ATP players joining. We have a Tennis Academy joining. Um, I have several independents that run groups in Minnesota, uh, one more based out of Nevada that's using the platform. So as you can see, it's just sort of being used at different levels in the sport, right from professional tennis all the way to uh, coaches that are training 12-year-olds and 10-year-olds. So this platform is leveling the playing field, and that's exactly that what, what we're sort of driving towards. So uh, one year from now, you know, I'm passionate to to spread the word and to get um, many academies, you know, as many as I can get really using this platform in the U.S. and sort of have different segments using it. So professional players, academies, independent centers, independent coaches, um, nonprofits. That's another area where uh, there, there are a few nonprofit organizations that are using tennis to impact life life skills. And so I really like to see programs that are passionate about putting out a great product, uh, about delivering great value, doing a great job with player development using this platform. And so it's just going to be about uh, scaling, scaling tenacity, getting it more out there, and, uh, and hopefully sort of growing as, 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 uh, as the time goes. One of the challenges 
as a tennis parent dealing with a tennis coach is, you know, sometimes we hear about things or we read about things, you know, hopefully parents are reading about things and hearing about things on Parenting Aces that sound amazing and they want to bring those ideas to the coach, but sometimes the coach isn't so receptive to hearing those ideas. Mm -hmm. Do you have any insight or tips that you can share with parents because you are a coach and you have also been a player and I, mm-hmm. I suspect one day you will be a tennis parent as well. Um, do you have any insights for helping parents maybe introduce the idea of tennisity to their child's coach or academy? Yep, yep. Uh, actually, I'm already a tennis parent, so I have a three-and-a-half-year-old and she has a tennis racket and uh likes to, to swing in our basement. <laughs> so part of me already feels I'm on the journey. But, uh, no, it's a great question. So so firstly, you know, it's about the relationship. So between the parent and the coach. And when you have a solid relationship that's established, you feel that, you know, you feel more free to, to speak, to introduce new ideas, to introduce new concepts. So number one, tenacity sort of facilitates and strengthens that relationship between the coach and the parent. Um, as the coach logs in and puts information in, and the parent logs in, and when they see that, they can see what the coach is doing. Now their perception of the coach is different. They have a better idea of what the coach is doing. And uh, as a result, the coach sort of initiates this process and begins to build that relationship. And then you have back and forth conversation as the as relationship progresses. And so the relationship just becomes a lot stronger where both the coach and the parent feel like they know each other better, they understand each other better, and uh, then that can kind of, that really sets the foundation for a more solid relationship. Uh, as opposed, uh, with the point of introducing tenacity to the coach, I think it's it's a very simple conversation. It's about saying that, you know, um, this, is, this is a new web platform that essentially uh, brings a lot of value to, to the player, as a, you know, we talked about the dashboard, understanding where the player is, provides an opportunity for us to um, have a vision, measure against that. The coach can upload a lot of resources. So the parent can position it in a way that you can say, here's a great website that's delivering a lot of value. And frankly, for the coach, it's going to be a lot more efficient. You know, why don't you check this out? Because you, if you use this, it will actually save you a lot of time in terms of how you communicate. It's a great communication tool. It's a great collaboration tool. And I really have looked at it and seen a lot of value here um, and uh, sort of encourage you to to check it out. So those are the sort of conversations that parents can have with coaches to, to introduce it in a way that sort of encourages the coaches to go and, and learn about it and, 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 and adopt it because I think that it can fundamentally change the way the coach approaches tennis and the way the you know the parent perceives value. Uh, I do want to talk on one one additional point that I've seen is when when you have group lessons, a lot of times there are multiple coaches working with the players, and so that's where it becomes very important for the coaching team to be well aligned. Uh, and right now, sometimes what happens is that uh, you have a coach working with a group on one day, you have another coach coming in working with the same group the next day. And what the second coach works on may be fundamentally different than what the first coach uh, worked on. So that's not very good for players and player development because you don't want one coach working on, for example, developing the serve, and now the players have just started learning the grip and started learning a new sort of technique, and all of a sudden the next year another coach comes in and starts teaching them how to hit forehands. So it's it's very important, and that's happening right now, again, because there's a communication gap. Coaches are not able to share information with each other. It's not being stored in the right place. So when you are on Tenacity, the coaching team can internally share information with each other. So, for example, lesson plans, drills, and so forth. And so when a new coach comes in, they're coming in with context. They're coming in with an understanding of, yeah, okay, this is the goals for this group. They've been working on this. Let me take, let me continue taking them on in this direction. Uh, and so from a player development standpoint, that, that, that has a lot of positive value. So those are the kind of conversations that parents can introduce uh, and encourage coaches to check it out and and, uh, and sign up. 
Yeah, that's that's a really important point. And it's funny that, that you mentioned the whole idea of coordinating lesson plans. One of the things I, I love about my current coaching situation, never mind what my kid's up to, but, but just for my women's team is um, the coaches are – they're great. They come out at every lesson knowing exactly what they're going to work on with us as a group. And there are, you know, eight to ten of us out there at a time on two courts with two different coaches. And it doesn't matter which court you're on, which coach you're with, you're still getting that same body of knowledge each week when you show up. And and from a junior perspective, when they're out there multiple times a week, you know, it becomes even that much more important that there be that coordination. So I love that aspect of it. I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, I right, want to right. ask you to oh, – go ahead. Oh, I was saying also, you know, from a timeline standpoint, I was with a coach the other day with the USDA team. And the team just got off the court, and then he had his feedback on on paper, and then each player kind of went through individually with with each player. Now, the match is finished, and there's about six players, so he spends about five or seven minutes with each player. So that's another half an hour of speaking to each player, and he hands them a a page with, with their comments, and so now the players take that and go. So think about efficiency here. The coach has spent another half hour with each player, which which is great. Um, but the coach may have another lesson sometimes to run to, and so that may cut into this time. Um, the players may have to go somewhere. So so if you if you can use tenacity, for example, if you if you, after the match the coach goes in, you can write his comments on the platform, share it with the players, and now the players have access to it. So the coach can do it at their time, at a time that's convenient. The the players will receive the information. They can access the information at the time that's convenient to them. And then if you need to have a further conversation, you can always do that at, at another time. So just from the way we communicate with each other, the way, uh, you know, bringing more efficiency, it just makes it a lot easier to to use a platform where you don't have to email people, you don't have to always spend time, you know, you can just make it a lot more efficient. Right. What are you guys doing to get the word out to the coaching community? Because... You know, I see that always as a barrier. It's it's really tough to reach the coaches. And I know there are coaching conventions and conferences that go on all the time, but not everybody goes to those. And, you know, not everybody's right. part of a coaching group on Facebook or whatever. So so what's your outreach look like these days? And, and you know, how do you have a plan for that moving forward? Right. So, so you know, I'm lucky that I've been in tennis many, many years, so I have established contacts. And, and I would say that, that coaches who, who know other coaches and friends who know uh, coaches or, or players training in academies or parents, they, they've been very helpful. So a lot of this is uh, me starting with introducing, demoing the product to, to keep people in the industry and then getting connected with others. So uh, people have really seen a lot of value in the platform and, uh, and they've been very supportive. So I've been able to connect with uh, with my established contacts and, and at least uh, do demonstrations of the site, get it, get it on their radar. That's one. Social media is, is another key aspect of spreading the word. But I think what it's going to take really for tenacity to be ingrained in the coaching culture is the support of all the three stakeholders, including parents. And so... Uh, parents have a lot of power here to learn about tenacity and have those conversations with their coaches and, and introduce it to them and, and sort of influence coaches just to, to, uh, to adopt it and use it. So definitely relying a lot on parents uh, to, to uh, leverage this, this uh, uh, website and, and sort of bring it more in, into the attention of, of the larger coaching culture and then sort of moving forward, some more focused plans on connecting with some of the bigger academies, uh, connecting with key individuals, the USDA, uh, you know, talking to them as well. So really using sort of the key players in the industry and trying to, trying to get the product in front of uh, as many academies and coaches and players and parents as we can get. And long term, what is your hope for the site? I mean, you know, big picture, utopian society, what's it look like with tenacity? 
So currently today, Tennessee sort of 1.0, the, the, the platform has been designed really well. We're happy with where we're at. We, you know, like any software, we're going to continue to develop it, and then there's always going to be areas we can get better. But we've, we've done a – we feel really happy with where it is today in terms of its functionality and its performance. So um, sort of 1.0 right now, it, it does require the coaches or someone on the team to input the data. So for example, if it's a dashboard, uh, the coach has to go in and, and put in the information on the player and save it to the site. Um, a lot of this can happen very quickly. So saving and sharing can happen within five seconds. It's just one click, and you can share it with everyone on the site. So think about a 1,000 thousand people on the site. You can share it with one click. You can notify them all with emails in one click. Um, but, but someone has to go in and input the data. Tenacity 2.0 is going to be moving in the direction of predictive uh, at least that's the vision right now, is how can we make the software more intelligent where potentially as you input data, as you, as the software, as the program learns more about you, it can provide you with more insights, right? So, so that's maybe one area that we need to think about and, and, and go towards. The, the other aspect that's very important is the entire sports industry is moving in this direction. If you look at Babel Act, they've just released a racket with, with a sensor. That racket is producing data. Your shoes, Nike has had this technology for many years, and so your shoes are giving you data. There's the Apple Watch, there's a Fitbit. Uh, Under Armour has been talking about clothes that are come, going to come out with sensors. So the whole society, we're moving towards a more data-driven society. Consumers are asking for more data. We're going to be leveraging data in, in many ways to, to make better decisions, and it's going to impact all aspects of our life. So for Tenacity, we need to position the platform in a way that much of this data can transfer over. So for example, if a coach is using a particular app and there's information there, how do we, bring, how do we transfer that data from that device into Tenacity without the coach having to go into Tenacity and input the data again? So that's our big challenge that we have. How, how do we create a platform that um, sort of we, we can collaborate with different, uh, with different mediums and then the, the data just sort of transfers over, again, making it easier for the coach. So that's what we have to work towards. Uh, I'm confident in our ability from, a, from an IT engineering standpoint as a, as a company grows and becomes more successful and as more people use it, and we're able to become more sustainable, then we can build in these sort of future technologies in there where data can transfer over, where the site can give you insights. And so that's really where I see this whole uh, sort of industry moving towards. And it's, it's frankly really exciting. Uh, and, and what we're telling coaches, players, and parents is, you know, move now with us. Don't wait on the sidelines because this is where everything is going. We're going into a digital world. We're already in it. Uh, this is a revolution. And the face of tennis, how we coach, how we manage programs, how we communicate with parents, how we communicate with players, how, how parents and players communicate with us, coaches and programs, it's all going to fundamentally change uh, over the next 10, 15 years. And so we are at the forefront now with Tennessee. We are moving. We're working with our coaches. We're working with our academies to further develop the site. So I would say move now. Join us now. Uh, don't wait for another five, six years because then it's just going to be that much harder for you to to be with the time, right, as a, as a program. So um, that's really the key aspect here is uh, we're going to be developing fast. Tenacity one year from now is going to be uh, very different than what it is today um, because we're getting great feedback, we're working with our programs, and we're striving to, to at the end of the day, help our coaches, help our programs uh, deliver great value to, to their players and parents. And this is really what it's all about. I mean, you look at the High Altitude Tennis Academy, this is an academy that's focused on that. They're working extremely hard uh, ultimately to deliver great value to their players and parents. And we want to partner with those, those organizations. And that's where we want to take the tennis industry to. Right. I, I, I love your whole idea. And, you know, to the parents out there that have younger players, I, I want to reinforce the thought that your kid is only in junior tennis through age 18, you know, till the, till the month they turn 19. <laughs> and then it's done. It's over. And if you're the parent of a 7, 8, 9, 10-year-old, that may seem like a long way away. I can tell you as a parent who has raised three kids, it is over in a blink. And <laughs> you can't 
wait and you can't waste time in their development. And that's one of the biggest frustrations and challenges as I see it as a parent is when you look back and realize, oh, my gosh, I should have, been, should have made this change a year ago. You know, if my child had been doing this for three years instead of for just two and a half years, where would they be in the developmental timeline? It would look much different. And and so I think your statement, Harsh, about join now, get, get involved now because moving so rapidly that, you know, as a parent, you've got to take advantage of every everything that's available to help your child if you are truly committed to this idea of development as a journey, as a pathway, not just getting from A to Z overnight, but really striving toward measurable goals and achievements along the way. So I, I'm that's, that's right, 100% Lisa. behind you. It's it's a great point you're making, you know, it, it, because at the development age, so if you if you look at ages eight onwards to eighteen, you want to see significant progress and strides being made every six months, every year. Those are critical. What happens once you're eighteen and you go to a Division One college, or if you're good enough, you go straight on the tour. You continue to make those strides, but then it's about increments. Right, So at, at 18, 19, a lot of the foundations in the game, a lot of that structure has already been put in place. From that point on, it's about making finer adjustments. It's about competition. It's about strategic. How do you strategically improve your game? How do you compete better uh, under different conditions? So at that point, then to become a top professional player, a top college player, you continue to make improvements, but they happen more incrementally. At, at the junior development age, that's where you need to see big jumps. That's where every year counts. Every six months counts. And you, as a player, as a parent, you want to see, see those improvements. Now, if it's not, if it's not happening the way, way you envision it, that's also good. If you have data that says, you know, the forehand isn't improving or, or performance isn't improving, that's good data because then you can say, okay, what adjustments do we have to make? So a lot of tenacity is not about evaluating players. It's not about evaluating coaches. It's not about evaluating parents. It's about empowering them because a lot of times through this journey, there are going to be ups and downs. And when you're down, you can say, okay, let's look back at the training plan. Let's look back at what we've sort of captured, what data we have, what are the notes look like, what was the training plan look like, what were, what are the drills look like, what were the match results like, what feedback did we get from the matches, and then let's say, okay, where do we need to make adjustments, right? So, so a lot of times not performing or not hitting your benchmarks isn't necessarily bad. It's actually a good thing if you can learn from it and you can make those changes. So um, all of that can be done at the junior development age if, if you have a structured approach. And that's why I say to coaches, it's very important that you take the time outside the tennis court. If you're only teaching tennis on the tennis court, you are, you're doing a great job, but you're missing the big picture because you do need to take some time away from the court to think about these things, to put a plan in place, because that is critical. Uh, and, you know, I'll spend half an hour with my players in a private lesson, sometimes I'll schedule half an hour to go to go over tenacity, to go over their goals, to go over. And my parents are very happy to pay for that half an hour because it's it's part of the way I teach. It's part of my plan. It's part of my strategy. So there's no harm in taking 20 minutes and saying, okay, you know, we're not going to hit forehands and backhands. We're going to talk about your goals. We're going to talk about uh, your your sort of uh, performance in training. Uh, and and so that's the fundamental shift we, we need to, to make also with players and parents is uh, and the message I want to send across to parents is it's okay if they're not hitting tennis balls all the time because, again, think of the law of diminishing returns, right? You can hit tennis balls six, six hours a day, and you can keep doing that, but every additional hour you're not getting as much uh, out of it. So, it, you know, it, if the coach right. wants to spend 15 minutes with your child to talk about strategy, and it doesn't involve hitting a tennis ball, that's fine. You know, it, it's totally fine because it's it's really valuable that they do that because that's going to set the course for the next 10 hours of instruction. Um, so it's absolutely worth it. Another aspect of this that, that we didn't touch on and, and we're running out of time, unfortunately. So darn it, you'll have to come back on the show another time <laughs> so we can address this. But, but by having all of this information 
in writing, so to speak, it holds the player and the coach accountable for what they are setting out to accomplish. And sometimes, especially in the teenage years, kids need a visual reminder of what they've committed to do. And it's okay for them to change their mind. Absolutely, that's okay. But, you know, sometimes it's good for them to take a look back and say, oh, my gosh, three months ago I said this was my goal and I've really dropped the ball here. I need to pick it up. And, right. you know, that's another big, big plus. So, Harsh, thank you so much right. for coming on and sharing Tenicity with our listeners. Again, it's T-E-N-I-C-I-T-Y dot com. There will be a link on our website for you guys to click on. And I encourage all of you to check it out and introduce it to your child's coach if they don't already know about it. Harsh, thank you so much. Have a great week. To my listeners, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Parenting Aces. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, Atlanta, paying too much for your wireless bill is not Southern hospitality, which is why millions of people have switched to Sprint this past year. To celebrate, you could save 50% on most T-Mobile rate plans when you switch to Sprint. All this on the Sprint network, which is faster, plus more reliable, and has better coverage than ever. Why wouldn't you switch today? Hurry, visit a Sprint store or Sprint.com to learn more. Limited time offer. Offer coverage not available everywhere. Excludes taxes, surcharges, add-on, and premium content. Subject to new line porting, activation fee, and credit. See website for eligible plans. Savings until March 31st, 2018 after payful amount. Restrictions apply. 